Ash 2015 has been filled with a lot of new information for multiple myeloma. Uh, I think if I were to synthesize everything I've heard and try to group it and kind of make sense of it, I think there are three major themes that I have picked up. The first one is that the three drugs that were approved by the FDA in November this year, uh, two monoclonal antibodies, daratumumab and elotuzumab, uh, and also the oral proteasome inhibitor, ixazomib. Those three drugs we have heard a lot about at this meeting. Uh, and what's new here at the meeting is that there is more follow-up information from what was known before this meeting. And also we now start seeing a lot of different combinations with these drugs. Uh, I think this is fantastic for our patients. Uh, the second thing uh, I think this meeting has communicated across the board is that we now have multiple studies showing that using three drugs instead of two drugs will give a much longer progression free survival and also overall survival benefits. So I think the old way of thinking that two drugs is good enough, that's no longer true in myeloma. And patients should be offered three drugs if you want to give them the best possible uh, way to have a good outcome. And the third topic uh, is a quite controversial topic that has been discussed for many years and it's still being discussed and I don't think actually the meeting definitively answers the question but it's the topic of do you need an autologous stem cell transplant uh, right away when you're diagnosed with myeloma. Uh, the study that was presented here at the meeting is the IFM, the French study and they used uh, now not very new therapy but newer therapy uh, the Velcade, Redlamid and Dexamethasone, which we here in America have, access, have had access to for 10 years or so. So using that regimen with an autologous stem cell transplant versus, all, versus only giving these drugs, Velcade, Redlamid and Dexamethasone, that was evaluated in this randomized study in France. And what they show is that the progression-free survival time was longer for those patients who uh, receive the transplant right after the, the combination therapy has given compared to those who only got uh, those uh, drugs for eight cycles and then they were put on maintenance with lanolidomide. The overall survival was exactly the same, there was no difference. And also more importantly I think is that in both these two groups the patients that did receive the transplant versus those who did not receive a transplant there were patients who have very good responses. There were patients who reached a complete response with either strategy. And when they looked, uh, and that was a second follow-up presentation here at ASH, uh, there are patients that are minimal residual disease negative or MRD negative, 10 to minus six, meaning that you can not find one cell in a million. They are negative for that. And they are true, they, they are in both of the arms, these patients. So if you reach 10 to minus 6 MRD negativity, you had the same outcome independent of how you were treated. So another way of looking at the data is that it doesn't matter how you what therapy you receive as long as you have a very good outcome. The progression-free survival and overall survival is the same. And I think there will be more uh, information coming out in, in that very direction. It's a little bit too early to conclude uh, that last statement I said, but I think the data very much points in that direction, and that I think is very, very exciting.